Hi everyone, I'm Sasha. Thanks for being here for the 12 days of yoga challenge with me. Today we are workshopping arm balances. One of my favorite things to do in life in general. I think I was born on my hands and or upside down. We'll get to inversions in the next video. But arm balances are essentially standing on your arms. So just like we worked on standing poses in the first video, we will find stability and equanimity in the hands, all of the finger tops, the whole palm. I recognize that it is such a privilege to have two functioning arms, hands, legs, and feet. So if you're working with something other than that, please let me know and I'm happy to help you find modifications. And in the meantime, if you, we are, if you are lucky enough to have functioning full limbs, please use them to your advantage. If you're missing a finger or a toe, you do the best that you can to cultivate equanimity in your own body. And a lot of that is utilizing the core and the legs and the muscles of the arms and the placement of the shoulder blades so that everything is functioning together. Like all of the limbs create this nice team and they all work together and they all cheer each other on and support each other in finding space and strength in your own body. We're just going to start with plank pose. So if you are pregnant or if you find that you can't balance on your toes in plank, you can just come onto your knees. That's cool. But what I want you to do is lift the abdominals in and up. If you're pregnant, you're going to think about wrapping the outer belly in. And you're just going to be here for a few breaths. If you need more space in your legs, you can widen the feet to the edges of the mat. If you're really feeling this, you can play with bringing the feet together and then opening the feet wide and kind of doing that a few times, like a little CrossFit action <laughs> within a yoga practice. Otherwise, you're just going to be hip width apart. If you find that the legs are weak and you need to cultivate some strength, guess what? The block between the legs is really helpful. So you press the block, or you press the legs into the block. The abdominals are lifting, so I'm not up here with my butt up, and I'm not down here in a back bend. I'm right in the middle. My shoulders are not squeezing together, nor are they completely separated, like a cat pose. They're stable. So it's kind of like if you come to hands and knees, and you take a cow pose and a cat pose. Cow pose is drawing the shoulders back. And cat pose is separating the shoulder blades. It's kind of like a hybrid of those two. So you find this nice steady line. And then we're in plank. Okay, so once you do that, come out. If you need to ever stretch your wrists, something you can do is come on finger tops and kind of pump the finger tops into the floor. You can turn the fingers out to the side or all the way back to face the knees. If that's too much for you, you stop where it's too much. I bend my elbows here so I'm a little, um, I don't lock my elbows forward. And again, press the floor away and press into uh, point your finger and thumb. And then turn them back around. And now we're going to practice side plank. So it's on one arm. Let's do the variation first. So if you're pregnant or if you're not balancing on your arms, hands and knees first. Left leg goes back. Right toes turn slightly back if you know you need more balance, the shin, or you keep it parallel for a challenge. This left foot comes down and the left arm goes up and you're just here and you're breathing and you're practicing balancing on one hand. So kind of like we did in standing poses and triangle pose and in twists, the collarbones widen. So the bottom shoulder blade comes forward into the chest as the bottom hand, the bottom shin presses down. And guess what? This back leg is working like crazy and you're rolling up. And if this is really, let's do that next. So let's come to the other side. So this is a nice modification for a side plank. The back leg goes back and the foot turns down. And again, if you need more stability, you turn this bottom shin back slightly and the top arm lifts. The other thing I didn't mention on the other side is that like back bending, the butt goes in and this top thigh goes back. So you create this nice center line with the body. This back shoulder blade widens the collarbone so it comes forward into the chest. You're not sinking down into this arm. If you want, you can look up, but not necessary. And now we're gonna to come to down dog because it's the start of an arm balance. We're on our arms and our legs. 
The feet are about the width of the hips. If you're tight, you can bring the feet the width of the mat. The hands press down, and the whole body lifts up. The whole torso lifts up into the hips, and the head drops, and you're breathing. And we're going to come onto the right foot first, lifting the left hand since that's what I started with. So I'm going to roll onto the outer edge of the right foot. I'm on the right hand, right foot, and I lift the left arm up, or hand on hip, elbow back. I bring this bottom shoulder blade forward into the chest. I lengthen the heels like crazy so that this top hip doesn't roll back. It's right on top of the bottom hip. If it comes along, the head goes up, it doesn't matter. This is called Vashtisthasana. The butt goes in, the thighs go back, and we'll come right to down dog. Vajra Mukha Svanasana, and we'll go to the other side. So you roll on the outside edge of the foot, and you lift the top arm or hand on hip. The butt goes in, the thighs press back. So you're not rolling this top hip open, it's stacked. This bottom shoulder blade is moving forward into the chest, and you're pressing, you're resisting the floor away from you. So it's like as the hand presses down, you lift the weight of the wrist up. If the head lifts, that's great. If not, that's great. And you come back to down dog and you breathe here for a moment. Put the knees down for a second. And then the last one we'll do, we'll practice, is crow pose. It's a little bit easier because it's on two hands. We're learning how to balance equally. And it's the beginning of inversions. It's actually often, uh, you often enter into crow pose from an inversion classically in uh, a lot of the Iyengar practice. We're just going to come right into it today from the hands. So what I like to start with is a block or something stable and I'm close to the ground and I come on to the block with my feet together, all the way together as though I've made one foot. So the inner edges of the feet are touching and I widen my knees. This is called malasana. It's the beginning of a malasana shape leg. It's kind of like a um, child's pose had a baby with an arm balance, is what I think about this. So the thighs are open enough to fit the torso, and I do my best to get my knees as high as I can up into my upper outer armpit. If they only come here for you, that's okay, but do your best to really wiggle them in. It's kind of like the thigh master, remember Suzanne Summers? You squeeze them in, the hands are forward, they're shoulder width apart, and they're firm. So as you press down, the weight of the wrists goes up. And then, as you start to come forward, you lift the middle back. You try not to lift the butt and do a somersault. That will happen sometimes, and that's okay. If you are scared, you put something soft, like a blanket or a bolster in front of you. So if you tumble downward, you have something soft to land on. I've fallen many times. So as you shift forward, you kind of lift the abdominals in and up so you create like a cat spine and come forward and squeeze the heels up into the butt and then lift the abdominals so you lift the middle back up and then slowly bring the feet down. If the feet aren't coming up, you can just stay here and work on lifting the abdominals and maybe work on lifting one foot and then the other. And you come down and remember you can stretch the wrists Another nice wrist stretch is just with the toes tucked. It's good for the toes too. Sitting the hips back as much as you can and turning the hands either up to the side or all the way back to the knees and just breathing for a moment. And this uh, is a wrist stretch and a stretch for the toesies as well. And you're breathing and you come out of it slowly. And so when you're practicing arm balances, Please press down equally into the floor with your hands, even if you're on your forearms, some arm balances are on your forearms, but you're really trying to find equanimity, whether you are on one hand, if you are, congratulations, or both hands. You're using your legs firmly, so even in crow pose, what we were just doing, the heels are squeezing up into the butt. So the legs are definitely not passive here. They're working, they're firming upward. The heels, rather, are squeezing upward as the hands press downward. If you have questions, let me know. Please stretch and roll your wrists around like you're at a rave, especially because we're typing all day, too. You can always turn your palms forward. This is a nice one as well. 
and I will see you for the next video. Thanks so much for your attention. Thank your body for all it can do for you, and I'll see you on the other side. Namaste.